morning y'all morning hope y'all having a good week so far it's today wednesday <laughs> know how it is day by day stuff be going on john 16 verse 33 lord jesus said in this world you're gonna have many trouble <laughs> but in him you will have peace i love that I ain't never had peace. On the time I, it's always crazy. It's always crazy. Word. It's always crazy. The Lord said each day you got enough problems. Hey, Miss Kirsten. Each day got enough problems of its own. Uh, but in Him, you truly do got peace. And how you remain in Him by staying in His Word. Like, Word. Ain't nobody perfect. I'm far from perfect. I fall short each and every single day. The Bible says, all oh, fall short of the glory of God. And all are justified freely. Where they came by the redemption through Jesus Christ. All, right. all, uh, all praise, honor, and glory go to my Father, Lord Jesus Christ, and the sweet Holy Spirit. Don't no praise and honor and glory go to me. Uh, I just thank God for who He is. Thank Jesus for who He is. Bless the Holy Spirit for who He is. All right. Nobody perfect. Including this brother here. I'll take y'all to it though. Psalms 34, <clears throat> verse 19. Brother David said, The righteous person may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him from them all. Psalms 37, 23, verses 23 to 26. Brother David said, The Lord makes firm the steps of the one who delights in him. Though he may stumble, he will not fall. For the Lord upholds him with his hand. I was young, and now I'm old. Yet I never seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging bread. They are always generous and lend freely. Their children will be a blessing. Proverbs 24, verse 16, Brother Solomon said, For though the righteous fall seven times, they rise again. But the wicked stumble, to, but the wicked stumble when calamity strikes. All right? The righteous person had many troubles, many troubles. All right. Getting it right. If the Lord ain't going on our side, I never could. Let's talk about getting it right. Let's go to Genesis, man. Let's go to Genesis, if you would. Turn with me to the, uh, Genesis 12. Getting it right. I'm 27. <laughs> I got a long way to go. <laughs> I only been saved three years. Getting it right. I got a long way to go. <laughs> Turn me to Genesis 12. Excuse. Are we gonna get there? The Bible says uh in Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 through 9, the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. And I'll make you into a great nation, and I'll bless you. I'll make your name great, and you'll be a blessing. I'll bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I'll curse. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. Amen. So Abraham went, as the Lord told him. <laughs> and Lot went with him. Nephew, he took his nephew Lot with him. Nephew, his nephew, like, I'm rolling with you, huh? you ain't leaving me here with these people. Abraham was 75 years old when he left. All right, <clears throat> mark that. Abraham was 75 years old. He took his wife, Sarah, with him and his nephew, Lot, and all the possessions he had, he had accumulated and the people they had acquired in Haran. They set out for the land of Canaan, and they arrived there. Abraham, Abraham traveled through the land as far as the site of the great tree at Moriah. <laughs> all right. And then the Lord appeared to Abraham and said to your offspring, I give this land. So he built the altar there to the Lord who had appeared to him. From there, he went on toward the hills east of Bethel and pitched his tent where Bethel on the west and Ai on the east. There he built the altar to the Lord and called on the name of the Lord. And Abraham set out to continue toward Negev. Abraham was 75 years old when he left. Good morning, y'all. All right. I'm 25. <laughs> He's 75. That's 50 years. All right. Okay. So if you under 75, you get prepared. All right. 
Abraham ended up in Egypt. He went down to Egypt and he lied. <laughs> Uh, there was a famine in Egypt, verse 10 said, ain't nobody perfect. Abraham lied. We lied to tell the truth. First thing Adam did when he sinned, uh, he didn't lie, but he hid from God. All right. But there was a famine in the land. Abraham went down to Egypt. Abraham went down to Egypt for a while because the famine was severe. As he was about to enter Egypt, he said to his wife, Sarah, I know you are a beautiful woman. When the Egyptians see you, they would say, this is his wife. So they would kill me, but let you live. So you must say, you my sister. This is wife. But he claimed, he, he wanted to tell everybody this is sister. He ain't had to do that. Abraham had fears. I'm going there to my next jump. We all got fears. But Abraham lied because he was afraid that he was going to lose his life. All right? Long story short, <laughs> Pharaoh found out that was his wife. And he said he shouldn't have did that. And he sent Abraham away. <laughs> Word. He blessed him and gave him a whole lot of stuff. All right. The Lord called Abraham. and He ended up in Egypt and he lied. He ended up getting separated from his nephew Lot in Genesis 13. In Genesis 14, he rescued his uh, nephew. In Genesis 15, the Lord made a covenant with Abraham. <clears throat> All right. Y'all listen to me. The Lord called Abraham in Genesis 12. He was 75 years old, ended up in Egypt, and he lied because he was scared he was going to lose his life. But God blessed him anyway and sent him on his way. In Genesis 13, him and his nephew got separated. In Genesis 14, he rescued his nephew. Abraham was 75 years old. He was ready for war to come in and come out. Abraham was ready to go. Genesis 15, the Lord made a covenant with him. It says, after this, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Don't be afraid. Abraham even had fears, as we all do. He was an old man. God said in Genesis 12, he was going to bless him and make him make his name great. He ain't had no children yet. After this, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, your very great reward. But Abraham said, Sovereign Lord, what can you give me? Since I remain childless, and the one who will inherit my state is Eleazar Damascus. And Abraham said, you have given me no children, so a servant in my household will be my heir. Then the word of the Lord came to him. This man will not be your heir, but a son who is your own flesh and blood will be, will be your heir. He took Abraham outside and said, look up at the sky and count the stars. Indeed, if you can, if you can count them. Then he said to him, so shall your offspring be. And Abraham believed the Lord, and the Lord credited to him his righteousness. And he said to him, I'm the Lord who brought you out of your out of the Chaldeans, who brought you to give you this land and take possession of it. But Abraham said, Sovereign Lord, how can I know that I will gain possession of it? <clears throat> the Lord said to him, Bring me a half and a goat and a ram, each three years old, along with a dove and a young pigeon. Abraham brought all these to him. He cut them in two and arranged the halves opposite of each other. The birds, however, he did not cut in half. The birds of prey came down on the carcasses, but Abraham drove them away. As the sun was setting, Abraham fell into a deep sleep, and a thick and dreadful darkness came over him. Then the Lord said to him, Know for certain that for 400 years your descendants would be strangers in the country, not their own, and they will be enslaved and mistreated there. But I will punish the nation they serve as slaves. And afterward, they will come out with great possessions. You, however, will go to your ancestors in peace and be buried at a good old age. In the 14th generation, your descendants will come back here, for the sin of the Morites has not yet reached its full measure. When the sun has set and darkness has fallen, a smoking fire pot with a blazing torch appeared and passed between the pieces. On that day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram and said, your descendants, To your descendants I give this land from the Wadi of Egypt of the Great River. To the Euphrates, the land of the Kenites, the Kenites, uh, Kenzanites, Camorites, Hizites, Perzites, Raphites, Amorites, the Canaanites, the Gershurites, and the Jesuitites. That's a whole lot of ites or whatever. All right. <clears throat> Abraham believed God, and he counted to him his rights in Genesis 15. Abraham was 75 years old. He still couldn't have children yet. <laughs> First, he lied. God called him in Genesis 12. He left. He was obedient to God. He ended up in Egypt and ended up lying because he was afraid for his life. God ain't get on him, but he let, he let him go. 
And then Genesis 15, the Lord appeared to him and said, don't be afraid, Abraham, because he was afraid. He was an old man. You got to think about it. <laughs> how long you think you got to live. He was an old man. And God said, I'm going to make your name great. I'm going to bless you. All peoples on earth are going to be blessed through you. you know, not too many old men can have children. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Once you hit a certain age, your reproduction, your reproduct, your, excuse me, your reproductive organs start to shut down a little bit, if you know what I mean. But, uh, Genesis 16 say, now Sarah, Abraham's wife, had borne him no children, but she had an Egyptian slave named Hagar. So she said to Abraham, the Lord has kept me from having children. See, Abraham's wife, Sarah, Abraham believed God, but Sarah still was a little bit faithless too. Listen to her. She said, the Lord has kept me from having children. Go sleep with my slave. <laughs> Now, ain't no man, you, you, if another woman tell a husband and wife, I can't have children, and I'm speaking as a man, and the woman say, go have sex with my uh, female slave or whatever, and have babies by her. Now, ain't nobody going to argue with you. I'm just saying, Abraham ain't argue with it, <laughs> but he committed adultery. The Lord ain't stopping, but he allowed it, but that wasn't God's way, but uh, the Lord, just read the verses. It says, the Lord has kept me from having children. The Lord has kept me from having children. Go sleep with my slave. Perhaps I could build a family through her. Abraham agreed to do what Sarah said. <laughs> so after Abraham had been living in Canaan 10 years, Sarah, took her, took, Sarah, his wife, took her Egyptian slave, Hagar, and gave her to her husband to be his wife. He slept with Hagar, and she conceived. Obviously, Abraham wasn't the one having the problem. For Abraham was able to have a baby by Hagar, but not with Sarah. Uh, but he committed adultery, and this wasn't the Lord's way. He didn't stop Abraham, but he allowed it. All right. When she became, when she knew she was pregnant, she was despised to her mistress, and then she said to Abraham, "You are responsible for the wrong I'm suffering. <laughs> I put my slave in your arms, and now she knows she's pregnant, and she despises me. May the Lord judge between you and me." And uh, she, the Lord, uh, she wanted to send, uh, Abraham said, do with her whatever you think is blessed, whatever you think is best. And Sarah started mistreating Hagar. So Hagar ran from him. Then the Lord, angel, the Lord found Hagar near a spring in the desert uh, on the side of the road to Shur and said, Hagar, slave of Sarah, where have you come from and where are you going? I'm running away from my mistress, uh, Sarah, she answered then the angel of the Lord said to her, go back to your mistress and submit to her. And I think it's somewhere in Ephesians where the Bible says, uh, <clears throat> slaves, uh, submit to your masters and uh, obey them for it's honor and pleasing to God, even the harsh ones, that close people at work type stuff like that. Not be like a slave towards them, but do it in the sense of pleasing the Lord. It's honor to God. <clears throat> The masters know they got a master over them too. But the angel of the Lord told her, go back to your mistress and submit to her. The angel added, I will increase your descendants so much that they will be too numerous to count. Then the angel of the Lord said to her, you are now pregnant and you will give birth to a son and you shall name him Ishmael. For the Lord has heard your misery and he will be a wild donkey to man. He, his hand will be against everyone and everyone's hand will be against him. And he will live in hostility toward all his brothers. She she gave this name to the Lord who spoke to her. You are the God who sees me. For she said, I have now seen the one who sees me. That is why the well was called Ber Lahore, Ber Lahore. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. And it still is between Kadesh and Ber. So Hagar bore Abraham a son. And Abraham named him Ishmael. And she had born. Abraham was 86, 86 years old at the time of his first son. Now... Abraham was 75 years old when God called him. He left out of Egypt. He lied. Uh, but God blessed him anyway and sent him on his way. In Genesis 15, the Lord appeared to him, renewed the covenant with him. He said, you're going to have uh, many children. One of your own children going to be the heirs through the promise. Genesis 16, his wife Sarah was being faithless. And uh, she came to him and said, you should take my female uh, slave and have a baby by her. Abraham ain't argue with him. He did with a man, any man <laughs> that ain't thinking too clear gonna do. But nevertheless, he committed adultery. God ain't get on him, but he allowed it. 
Now, in Genesis 17, it says, When Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am the Lord God Almighty. Walk before me faithfully and be blameless. Then I will make my covenant between you, and I will greatly increase your numbers. It says Abraham was 99 years old at the time. It was a 24-year span. It took Abraham 24 years up. 24 years. <clears throat> 24 years of getting it right. Abraham fell face down, and God said, Abraham fell face down, and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You will be a father of many nations. No longer will you be called Abram, but your name will be Abraham. For I have, for I have made you a father of many nations. I will make you very fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings will come from you. I will establish my covenant as an everlasting covenant between me and you and your descendants after you for the generations to come, to be your God and the God of your descendants after you. The whole land of Canaan, where you now reside as a foreigner, I will give as an everlasting possession to you and to your descendants after you, and I will be their God. Then God said to Abraham, As for you, you must keep my covenant, you and your descendants after you, for generations to come. This is my covenant with you and your descendants after you, the covenant you are to keep. Every male among you are to be circumcised and to undergo circumcision. It will be a sign of the covenant between me and you for generations to come. Every male among you who is eight days old must be circumcised, as it is today when people go in the hospital. I believe they ask their mother, father, do you want to circumcise a parent? And uh, why they do that? Because <laughs> they don't even believe in God or whatever, but they still keep circumcision. They do it because God instituted the Abraham. Read the verses. That don't make you a part of God's family. It, they, I'm just saying, that's another story for another day. God also said to Abraham, as for Sarah, your wife, you are no longer to call her Sarah, but Sarah, but to call her, but her name will be Sarah. I will bless her and will surely give you a son by her, you see, and I will bless her so that she will be the mother of all nations. Kings of people will come from her. Abraham fell face down and he laughed and he said to himself, <laughs> excuse me. Abraham fell face down and he laughed and said to himself, Will a son be born to a man a hundred years old? Will Sarah bear a child at the age of 90? <laughs> and Abraham said to God, If only Ishmael might live under your blessing. Then God said, Yes, your wife Sarah will bear you a son, and you will call him Isaac, and I will establish my covenant with him as an everlasting covenant for his descendants after him. And as for Ishmael, <clears throat> I have heard you. And I will surely bless him. I will make him fruitful, and I will greatly increase his numbers. He will be the father of twelve rulers, and I will bless him into a great nation. This is right here. But my covenant I will establish with Isaac from Sarah, who will bear you this time next year. When he had finished speaking with Abraham, God went up from him. On that very day, Abraham took his son Ishmael and all those who was born in his household, and brought with the money, brought with his money, and every male in his household, and circumcised them as God told them. Abraham was ninety-nine years old when he was circumcised, and so was his son Ish. And Ishmael was thirteen. Abraham and his son Ishmael was both circumcised on that very day, and every male in Abraham's household, including those born in his household or those or those brought from a foreigner, was circumcised with them. All right, Abraham was called in Genesis 12. He was 75 years old at the time. When he left, got up out of Egypt, he lied because <laughs> he was scared that he was going to lose his life. Then uh, he got to Genesis 15. The Lord told him, don't be afraid. You're going to have me. Uh, you're gonna, I'm going to bless you. And one of your own offspring going to be your heir. Genesis 16, Sarah was being faithless. She said, I still can't have children yet. Won't you uh, take my female slave? Abraham may argue what he did what a man gonna do and had a baby by he committed adultery that went the Lord's way but the Lord allowed it uh, and then Genesis 17 the Lord appeared to him and said I'm the Lord God Almighty walk before me faithfully Fa walk before me faithfully and be blameless and I establish my covenant with you he said your, my covenant gonna be through your son Isaac all right it's Abraham was 99 years old it took him 24 years Genesis 18, the Lord appeared to Abraham and three visitors and came to him. And, uh, 
Yeah, Genesis 19, Genesis 18, the Lord that came to Abraham again. Genesis 19, Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed. I'm skipping past this, I don't want to, but I want to skip to the point. It wasn't until Genesis 21 that Isaac was born, and the Lord was gracious to Sarah. As he said, the Lord did for Sarah what he promised. Sarah couldn't have children, but the Lord said, I'm going to come back and, and touch Sarah so that she can have children. And she became pregnant and bore a son to Abraham in his old age. At that time, God promised him. Abraham gave the name Isaac to be the son she bore to Sarah. When his son Isaac was eight days old, Abraham circumcised him as God commanded him. Abraham was 100 years old and when Isaac was born to him. Sarah said, God has brought me laughter, and everyone who hears about this will laugh with me. And she added, who would have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse children? Yet I have born him a son in his old age. Abraham was 100 years old. Took him 25 years to get it right. <clears throat> and uh, I've been saved three years. <laughs> Long way to go. And God tested Abraham sometime later. But he'll never test you without giving you the answer already. It says sometime later, God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, here I am. Uh, sometime later, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, and Abraham said, here I am. Then God said, take your son, your only son. God ain't going to never ask you to do nothing that he ain't going to do himself. A good leader. Word. Always know that. Then God said, take your son, your only son, who you love, Isaac, and, to, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on the mountain I will show you. Anybody else would have argued with God? Where? You want me to do what? This is what you said. My promise going to come through. But Abraham, already he already passed before he even got up. You know, he already, once you take God at his word, man, you ain't falling down on your face no more. Abraham was falling down on his face for 25 years. Where? Once you take God at your, once you take God at his word, you ain't falling down on your face no more. Early the next morning, Abraham got up and loaded his donkey. He took with him two servants and his son Isaac. When he had enough, when he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. He said to his servant, stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We'll worship and then we'll come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac. And he himself carried the fire and the knife. And the two of them went on together. Isaac spoke up and said to his father, Abraham, father. <laughs> Abraham, this ain't his first time doing this. Ask not to make a sacrifice. He's like, well, yo, what's going on? Uh, Father, yes, my son. Abraham replied, the fire and the wood here. But where the lamb at for the burn offering? <laughs> Abraham said, God himself going to provide the lamb for the burn offering, my son. And yes, he will. And the two of them went on together. When they reached the place of God, that, that God had told him about, Abraham built the altar there and arranged the wood on it. He bound his son Isaac and laid, laid him on the altar on top of the wood. And then he reached out his hand and took the knife to slay, to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy. He said, do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld your son from me, your only son. <laughs> Abraham looked up in the thicket and he saw a ram caught by his horns and he went over took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. And Abraham called that place, the, uh, the Lord will provide. And to this day, it said on that mountain, the Lord will provide. And the angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will take possession of the cities of their enemies, and through your offspring all nations on earth will be blessed because you have obeyed me. Then Abraham returned to his servants, and they set out together for Bathsheba, and Abraham stayed in Bathsheba. And pretty much you can close the book on Abraham's life because that's how his junk in. Like, word. He and once you take God at his word, getting it right. It took Abraham 25 years to get it right. <clears throat> so if you just 10, I know people have been saved 40, 50, 60 years or whatever. It's people spent 40 years in the desert. 
Moses was 40 years old when God called him, and he took, took him 40 years by himself to get it right. He was 80 years old when God called him to go back to free the people, and he spent another extra 40 years with the people in, in the wilderness. <laughs> That's 80 years of getting it right. <laughs> Word, 25 years don't seem that long, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah, getting it right. Don't nobody get it right off the bat, but when you take God at his word, you done falling on your face. All right. Bless y'all for being patient with me. I know it's still early. I got to wake up too, for real, for real. Abraham had fears. We all got fears, you know. I'd lead him to this joint, for real, for real. For real, I mean, let, me, let me go here first before I go there, because I'm going to get carried away. And I know some stuff... Uh, it's this movie. This is an old movie. A junk called Aragon or something. Where I remember watching this junk. And it's a, it's a dragon that said to dude, dude was scared. And she said to him, without fear, you can't have courage. I said, hmm. I said, it do make sense. Because it, quite often it's a thing. And that, that's true. Without fear, you can't have courage. We all have fears and stuff. All right. Turn with me to... Uh, Matthew. I'm gonna go to turn to Matthew. Yeah. Matthew chapter six, verse twenty-five through thirty-four. Lord Jesus said, Do not worry. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food? and the body more than clothes. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns. And yet your heavenly father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than them? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? <laughs> no. And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothed the grass of the field, which is here today and gone tomorrow and thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you a little faith? So do not worry, saying, what should we eat or what should we drink or what should we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you have need of them. But this is right here. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. But tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Amen. You see, it's uh, I was talking to one of my dudes. People get caught up. I got family and stuff. You no, know, I got family. I got to take care of. I got a good. I got a great grandma to take care of. She, ninety three. You know? A lot of stuff going on. Everybody got stuff going on and stuff. Uh, some stuff, uh, you don't. It don't make too much sense on this side of the field. Best thing I can tell you is to keep uh, trusting the Lord. That'll be the best thing you ever did. Have the best decision you ever made in your life. I go here to go this. I told you I'd be all over the place. I don't know why, but the jump be on my mind. Time with the loop. Chapter 16, it don't matter if you're rich or poor or what you got going on. Life can end at any day. <clears throat> God bless the people going through things because it is people who really is losing their children and stuff. And it's real. We worried about little stuff for real for us. People really dying out here. I got buddies and stuff. People look at me like I'm crazy. Wonder why I don't run with them, certain like that. I can be anywhere I want to be right now. I can be in Cali, New York, anywhere I want to be at right now, doing whatever I want to do. Where I can be doing anything I want to do. How can I really worry about gaining the whole world and getting rich and people dying out here for real, for real? Like, it's something that's more important than money. When I'm when I'm laying on a hospital bed and see somebody's kid, something like that, ain't all the money in the world can't fix that. You, you need something real. Like, where? Can't no money fix that. You see what I'm saying? 
really need the power of God. You at the you at the mercy of God. It's only by God's grace you can get up every day in some situations. It don't matter if you got it, don't got it. And uh, we lose sight of this for real. For, I do too. All right. How can I worry about getting this and getting that and stuff going on every day? Children, I'm telling you, man. But turn with me. <clears throat> Luke chapter 16, verse 19. Jesus told a story. He said, there was a rich man who was dressed in purple. Verse 19. Luke chapter 16. Verse 19. Verses 19 through 31. Best decision you ever make in your life is to accept Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Might not pay off too much on this side of the field. But it will pay off. Jesus said, there was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and lived in luxury every day. At his gate was laid a beggar named Lazarus, covered with sores, and long when he eat what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs came and licked the sores. The time came for, the be for when the beggar died, and the angels carried him to Abraham's side. Then the rich man also died and was buried in Hades, where he was tormented. He looked up and saw Abraham far away with, Lazar with Lazarus by his side. So he called to him, Father Abraham, have pity on me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in the water and cool my tongue because I am I am in agony in this fire. But Abraham replied, son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things while Lazarus received bad things. But now he is comforted here. Thank you. And you are in agony. And besides all this between us and you, a great chasm has been set in place so that those who want to go... <laughs> From here to, to you cannot, nor can anyone cross over from there to us. He answered, Then I beg you, Father, send Lazarus to my family, for I have five brothers. Let him warn them so that they will not also come to this place of torment. Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to them. No, Father Abraham, he said, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. Abraham said to them, If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not be convinced even if someone rises from the dead as it is today. So they don't listen to most of the prophets. They won't be convinced even if someone's to get up from the grave. They still won't believe. But uh, things might not pay out on this side of the field. Best decision in your life, except in Jesus Christ. I'm 27. Was 30, 40, 50, 60 years. The oldest, longest person probably live is 120. I don't know nobody yet in the past 2,000 years that there to be over 120, as the Bible say. The Lord said to, uh, and the Lord said to know a man's lifespan gonna be cut down to 120 years. A long time ago, people used to live for a long time, but life has been cut short to 120 years. Long story short, what I'm trying to say is I'm 27. All right, that's 30. Uh, 120. That's uh, 90 years. I got 90 years at the maximum. <laughs> What's 90 years of uh, having everything I want on Earth compared to eternity? Where I'm, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Turn with me to uh, I was talking to one of my brothers and. Uh, Sometimes we look around. You see it every day, too. Look around. I do is look around. You see people getting away with things, type stuff like that. And you wonder how come they get this and I don't get that or whatever. You're not the only one. All right. It's a nice story for that. Turn with me to Psalms 37. <clears throat> Y'all be patient with me. Yeah. Psalms 37. Brother David, starting at verse one. Brother David said, sometimes things always go our way, all right? But don't get in a panic or stuff about it. Psalm 37, verse one. Say, do not fret, which means panic, because of those who are evil, or be envious of those who do wrong. For like the grass, they will soon wither. 
like green plants, they will soon die away. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Take delight in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Com commit your way to the Lord and trust in him, and he will do this. He will make your righteousness, your righteous reward, shine like the dawn, your vindication like the noonday sun. It said right here, it says, be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Sometimes you're in a situation, life and stuff going on. I know y'all work, got jobs or whatever. Feel like you can't get nowhere. It might be like that for a year, two, three, four, five, six years. Feel like you can't get nowhere or this and that or whatever. What I'm saying is, sometimes your life is in the mercy of God's hand. Anything could change. And sometimes he have you in a situation where you ain't got no choice but to be in total dependency on him. It's like being in a boat. I believe in Genesis chapter 9, Noah was in the boat. Or chapter 6, yeah. Noah was in the boat. The Lord's going to destroy the world. And he won't, know, he won't in control of his life sometimes. You, you're not in control of your life. It don't matter if you think you is or not. But it says, be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret when people succeed in their ways, when they carry out their wicked schemes. Refrain from anger and turn from wrath. Do not fret, it only leads to evil. For those who are evil will be destroyed. But those who hope in the Lord will inherit the land. A little while and the wicked will be no more. Though you look for them, they will not be found. But the meek will inherit the land and enjoy peace and prosperity. The wicked plot against the righteous and gnash their teeth at them. But the Lord laughs at the wicked, for he know that day is coming. The wicked draw the sword and bend their bow to bring down the poor and the needy, to slay those whose ways are upright. But their swords will pierce their own hearts, and their bows will be broken. This is it right here. Better the little have, better the little that the righteous have than the wealth of many wicked. For the power of the wicked will be broken, but the Lord upholds the righteous. The blameless spend their days under the Lord's care, and their inheritance will endure forever. In times of disaster, they will not willing, even though things be all. It says in times of disaster, they will not willing. In days of famine, they will enjoy plenty, but the wicked will perish. Though, though the Lord's enemies are like the flowers of the field, they will be consumed. They will go up in smoke. The wicked borrow and do not repay, but the righteous give generously. Those the Lord bless will inherit the land, but those he curses will be destroyed. The Lord makes firm the steps of the one who delights in him. Though he may stumble, he will not fall, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. I was young, now I'm old, yet I've never seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging bread. They are always generous and land freely. Their children will be a blessing. Turn from evil and do good, then you will dwell in the land. For the Lord loves the just, and he will not forsake his faithful ones. Wrongdoers will be completely destroyed. The offspring of the wicked will perish. The righteous will inherit the land and dwell in it forever. The mouths of the righteous are the wisdom, and their tongues speak what is just. The law of their God is in their hearts. Their feet do not slip. The wicked lie in wait for the righteous, intent on putting them to death. But the Lord will not leave them in the power of the wicked, or let them be condemned when brought to trial. Open the Lord and keep his way, and he will exalt you to inherit the land. And when the wicked are destroyed, you will see it. Brother David said, I seen a, a wicked and a ruthless man flourishing like a luxuriant native tree. But he soon passed away and was no more. Though I looked for him, he could not be found. Consider the blameless and observe the upright. A future awaits for those who seek peace. But all sinners will be destroyed. There will be no future for the wicked. The salvation of the righteous comes from the Lord. He is their stronghold in times of trouble. The Lord helps them and delivers them. He delivers them from the wicked and saves them because they take refuge in him. All right. Amen. It's a dude. Turn with me to uh, Psalm 73. <laughs> it's a knowledge dude. Sometimes we, uh, we get caught up looking around. The this and that and lose track. You see how the people got much stuff going on. You could be doing everything right and still can't uh, understand. 
And when you try to understand it, don't make a whole lot of sense. You ain't the only one. The brother felt the same way. Dude named ASAP. Psalm 73 verses uh, 1 through 28. The brother said, surely God is good to Israel, to those who are pure in heart. But as for me, my feet had almost slipped. I had nearly lost my foothold, for I envied the arrogant. <laughs> when I saw the prosperity of the wicked, they have no struggles. Their bodies are healthy and strong. They are free from common human burdens. Excuse me. They are free from common human burdens. They are also, they are not plagued by human ills. Therefore, pride is their necklace. They clothe themselves with violence. From their callous hearts comes iniquity. Their evil imagination have no limits. They scoff and speak with malice. With arrogance, they threaten oppression. Their mouths lay claim to heaven, and their tongues take possession of the earth. Therefore, their people turn to them and drink up waters in abundance. They say, how will God know? Does the Most High know anything? This is what the wicked are like. Always free of care. They go on amassing wealth. Surely in vain, the brother said, I have kept my heart pure and washed my hands in innocence. All day long I've been afflicted, and every morning brings new punishment. I'm sure somebody else feel the same way. The brother said in verse 14, All day long I've been afflicted, and every morning brings new punishment. He said, If I spoken out like that, I would have betrayed your children. When I tried to understand all this, it troubled me deeply. Verse 17 say, till I enter the sanctuary of God, and then I understood their final destiny. Surely you place them on slippery ground. You cast them down to ruin. How suddenly are they destroyed, completely swept away by terrors. They are like a dream when one awakes. When you arise, Lord, you would despise them as fantasies. When my heart was grieved and my spirit embittered, I was senseless and ignorant. I was a brute beast before you, yet I'm always with you, and you hold me by my right hand. You guide me with the counsel, and afterward you will take me into glory. Who do I have in heaven but you? And earth has nothing I desire besides you. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Those who are far from you will perish. Those who are far from you will perish. You destroy all who are unfaithful to you. But as for me, it is good to be near God. I have made the sovereign Lord my refuge. I will tell of all your deeds. Amen. <laughs> You see, that was a, uh, it'd be like that sometimes. Don't fret, don't panic. Things seem off and don't make a lot of sense sometimes. It's just like going fishing. Them fish on the other side of the hook don't know they about to come up. Same way life's short, it's fast. Don't nobody know when uh, stuff about to happen. But we was talking about fears earlier. Without fear, you can't have confidence. I like that. I do like that. I have fears. Yeah, I have fears. Fears of failing. Fears of losing my loved ones. Fears of losing it all. Fears of being accepted, being alone, walking through the darkness, repeating mistakes, facing death, famine, plagues, and sword. Uh, Psalms 34. I like what Brother David said. Is it all down there? Yeah. Psalms 34, verses 4 through 10. Brother David said, uh, I sought the Lord, and he answered me. <laughs> and he delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. This poor man called, and the Lord heard him. He saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, and he delivers them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who take refuge in him. For the Lord, fear the Lord, you his holy people. For those who fear him lack nothing. The lions may grow weak and hungry, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Psalms 54, verses 4 and 7, Brother David said, Surely, verses 4 and 7, Brother David said, Surely God is my help. The Lord is the one who sustains me. Verse 7, Brother David said, You have delivered me from all my troubles, and my eyes have looked in triumph on my foes. And I have fears, but the Lord our God, Jesus Christ, and the sweet Holy Spirit is more than able to deliver me through them all. I fear the Lord our God more than any of my personal fears. 
Matthew 10, verse 28, Lord Jesus said, don't be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Amen. Our Father in heaven, Lord Jesus Christ, and the sweet Holy Spirit of God is more than able to deliver us from all our fears and troubles. It's better to fear him. It's better to put your confidence and trust in the Lord and not your situations. Put your confidence in Lord Jesus Christ. Jeremiah 17, one of my favorite uh, chapters. All right, y'all bear with me. If you read them. Jeremiah 17, verses 7 through 10. Brother Jeremiah said, Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. It will be like a tree planted by water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when heat comes. Its leaves are always green. It has no worry in the years of drought. and never fails to bear fruit. The heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? How the Lord search the heart and examine the mind to reward each person according to their conduct, according to what their deeds deserve. Dude, uh, Psalms 125, come on, Psalms 125, verses 1 through 2. Say, those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be shaken, but endures forever. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people both now and forevermore. Psalms 25, verse 5. Put your confidence in the Lord, man, no matter what's going on. Brother David said, guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God, my Savior, and my hope is in you all day long. All right. Romans 10, verse 11. Y'all oh, forgive me. Yeah, Brother Paul said, uh, Romans 10, verse 11. Brother Paul said, as scripture says, anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame. You see, anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame. I fear some stuff. There's two types of people. Those who trust in the Lord God Almighty and those who don't. Those who trust in man or other gods. Those who delight in the law of the Lord. And those who delight in lawlessness of the world, those who uh, fear God Almighty will respect and love, and those who do not fear God will no respect and no love. This one called uh, Fear the Lord, man. It's two types, there's two different types. There's a difference between the two, as clear as day. Listen. Yeah, the world we live in in bad shape. Satan running around like a chicken with his head cut off. Besides, his time short, and uh, he ticked off. Sin been on the rise and been increasing. God destroyed the world once with a flood because of the wickedness, evil, the sinfulness of man was increasing. And the inclination of the human heart was evil. Way back in Noah's day, look at us now. He spared Noah, thank you, Jesus. Who knows how to say the godly from the ungodly. Amen. The Lord destroyed the world with a flood a long time ago because of how bad things was. Well, things are worse than now. Do you think God Almighty is happy with the world? It's uh, 2022. And the world in chaos. The Lord said he's coming back again one day. You better put your fears on the Lord. I'll bear with me. And uh, it's not going to be a pleasant day for the world. It's going to be a blessed day for all of God's people. But the people who do not belong to God or have given their lives to God, it'd be something terrible on earth. I don't want to worry about that. I don't have to worry about that because Lord Jesus is going to snatch all of us, all of his people up out of it in a second, literally, in the blink of an eye. 
1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 through 18, Brother David said, For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first, and after those, and after that, we who are still alive and are left will be called up together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we'll be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. But with these words, I want to rest. The Lord our God and Savior Jesus Christ has promised that he's coming back. Everyone wants to know, well, you better be, everyone wants to know when. Well, you better be ready for him to come first. There's a reason why he hasn't come back yet. Here it is. Second Peter chapter 3, verses 3 through 18. Brother Peter said, Above all, you must understand that in the last days, scoffers will come, scoffing and following their own evil desires. They will say, Where is, the, where is this coming? He promised. Ever since our ancestors died, everything goes on as it has since the beginning of creation. But they deliberately forget that long ago, by, God, by God's word, the heavens came into being and the earth was formed out of water by water. By these waters also the world at that time was deluged and destroyed by the same word that the and by the same word the present heavens and earth are reserved for fire, being kept for the day of judgment and destruction of the ungodly. Don't forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not want anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will roll, will roar, the elements will be destroyed by fire, and the earth and everything in it will be laid bare. Verse 12 says, That day will bring about the destruction of the heavens by fire. The elements will melt in heat. Verse 15 says, Bear in mind that the Lord's patience means salvation. There is still time left to be saved. Um, Psalms 37, I think I read this early. Verse 23 to 25, Brother David said, The Lord makes firm the steps of the one who delights in him. Though he may stumble, he will not fall, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. I was young, now I'm old, yet I never seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging bread. Romans 3, 21 through 20, 20. Romans 3, verses 21 through 22. Brother Paul said, The righteousness of God has been made known to which the law and the prophets testify. This righteousness is given through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. Romans 10, verse 17. Brother Paul said, Consequently, faith, consequently, faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word about Christ. Ask Rehab, a prostitute from Jericho. You don't have to be a scholar to please God. It don't take a thousand years to please God. You can't buy God's favor. It's all by faith. God is pleased with anyone who put their faith in him, in his mercy, in his love, in his word. Rehab did not have the Ten Commandments. She wasn't raised in the church. She didn't have years of study time in God's word. I tell you what she did have. She had faith and fear of God in her heart. She believed and she heard. She believed all she heard about God from the Red Sea being dried up to now. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6 say, Without faith, it's impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to him must believe that he is this and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. James chapter 2, verse 17, James said, By faith itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. Look at Rehab. She put her faith in action. She hid the two spies for the Lord. She knew God had given them the city. She believed and she asked them to show her kindness. As she shown them, she wanted God's mercy. She said, we heard how the Lord dried up the Red Sea. She believed. And uh, it caused her to ask God, call her to ask for God's mercy. She feared God. She saw God, she sought God out in his mercy. And the Lord showed her and her family. And the Lord saved her and her family. Amen. Fear God and keep his commandments. She didn't have the commandments. <laughs> She didn't have the commandments. But she did have God's word. Yeah. Look at the verses. 
Joshua 2, verses 9 through 12, verse 9. I know that the Lord has given you this land. A great fear of you has fallen on us, and all who live in this country are melting in fear because of you. We heard how the Lord dried up the waters at the Red Sea for you, and how you came out of Egypt. What you did to Sean and OG, to a more our kings completely destroyed. When we heard of it, our, heart, our hearts melted in fear, and everyone's courage fell because of you. For the for the Lord our God, for the Lord your God is God in heaven above and on earth below. Now please swear to me by the Lord that you will show kindness to my family because I've shown you kindness. Give me a sign. Give me a sure sign. God will give you a sure sign. That you will spare the lives of my father, my mother, my brothers, my sisters, and all that belong to them. And that you will save them from death and save us from death. Amen. God gave us scarlet cord. Gave her a scarlet cord. Told her to make sure all the members of your family must be in your house when we come. And you will be spared. Amen. Hosea chapter 6 verse 6. The Lord said, I desire uh, acknowledgement of God and mercy. Psalms chapter 1 verses 1 through 3. Uh, Brother David said, Bless is the one who don't walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take. Or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord, or who meditates on his law day and night. Jeremiah chapter 17, verses 5 through uh, 10. It says, uh, Curse is the one who put their trust in man, who draws strength from mere flesh, and whose heart turns away from the Lord. That person will be like a bush in the wastelands. They will not see prosperity when it comes. They would dwell in the parched places of the desert, in the salt land where no one lives. But blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. Anytime you put your confidence in the Lord, you won't be put to shame. Rehab won't put to shame. You see? Our conduct and our disease deserve death. But blessed the Lord our God. He is merciful, gracious, and kind, slow to anger, and abounding in love. We all sin and fall short of the glory of God. Psalms 103, verses 10 through 11 say, He has not dealt with us according to our sins or punished us according to our iniquities. As the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward those who fear him. Hosea chapter 6, verse 6, the Lord said, I desire mercy and not sacrifice and acknowledgement of God rather than burnt offerings. You see, the Lord is merciful, has been merciful, and is still willing to have mercy on us. He wishes us to delight in him and his law, his word, to fear him out of love and respect for who he is. The Lord our God uh, himself came down from heaven and touched Mount Sinai and lit it up with his glory. The man was on fire from God's presence, literally. Uh, scared the daylights out of those people. <laughs> Even Moses was scared. God spoke to him face to face out of the fire. The people didn't want to hear God's voice. It was so powerful. They truly thought they would die. No one has ever heard the voice of God and still lived before. They told Moses, we do everything God asks of you. Only you speak to us for yourself, not God, for we are afraid. No more has ever heard the voice of God as we have and live. They said, God has shown us his glory and majesty. That's so uh, I'm going to get super carried away. Uh, it's best to put your fear and your trust in the Lord. We have fears and stuff. We all do. You better fear the Lord, though. Put your faith and confidence in Him. Anytime you do that, man, something, something happens. Like, uh, something do happen. I can't explain like I want to. Anytime you put your faith and hope and trust and confidence in Him in a situation, man. I know things might not change right then and there. Like a 24, like immediate change. But, uh, ain't nothing. Got problems with stuff. It's, uh, cast it on him. That's what he told us to do. Philippians chapter 4, I believe. Y'all be patient with me. Yeah, I get my mind right. And Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through four through uh, 7. Say, Rejoice in the Lord always. I said again, Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, 
Present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Word. Cast it on him. It's another one. Say, cast your anxiety. I think it's in James. No, it's First Peter, I believe. Say, cast your anxiety on the Lord. Because he cares for you. Like, word. He already done. Stuff be going on. But it's the peace that guards your heart and your mind through the situation, man. And I can't explain like I want to, but it gets you through it day by day. You need that junk. Amen. Y'all uh, be patient with me. I keep praying for I keep praying for y'all. And God bless all y'all who rocking with me. And I hope the Lord fill y'all with the Holy Spirit. And, uh, day by day, man. The Lord said he ain't going to do everything in the whole complete chain. I wish I knew that three years ago. <laughs> Yeah, he ain't gonna do everything in the complete change. Little by little, how he gonna do things for us. He's gonna do everything in one day. It'll be it's more trouble than you think. Where but <laughs> that's for another day I explain that to y'all. Well God bless y'all. Y'all be patient with me. I see y'all tomorrow, Lord's will.